Hi right, guys, Hatch Kramer here again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far with some roster developments continuing to go down over the last 24 hours. Shotzi with a very interesting reveal on exactly which players in his Call of Duty career have done the best to elevate his play. Obviously mentioning the likes of Clay from his first year, but a couple of other names were rather interesting indeed, especially one might argue the omission of Pred from this list, given what he seemed to do to Shotzi this season, Optic Texas, in terms of bringing out the energy in this guy. Very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I greatly appreciate it. Apologies for no second video yesterday, by the way. There was a lot going on. I was flying back from Copenhagen. In demo, you guys, the eagle eye of you will have noticed that we had the Danish trends on the right hand side over the last few days. With all the stuff going on in Formula 1 and Valorant, just wasn't really possible to get a second COD video done. Usually I'll give you guys a warning. I kind of forgot to do it in yesterday's morning video. So it is what it is. But um, look, normal scheduling will resume as much as is possible. But I'm not going to lie. There's not been much happening over the last few days to really talk about it with Call of Duty. But um, yeah, I'll do my best to get you guys one tonight as usual. But if you guys are looking for something else to watch tonight, definitely tune in for this. So many of you guys might have watched last year's 2023 season recap. It's like... The the best video that we put together last year, in my opinion, on the Breaking Point channel. This year, it's even better. Like, I can guarantee you that. And um, so, yeah, if you guys are looking to relive the season, then tonight is the place to be on the Breaking Point channel, premiering at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so a few hours from when this video is going live. So, um, you know, the boys have done a killer job on this, as always. Like, I mean, even look at the graphics on this. You know what I'm saying, boys? Like, we are doing it different here. And um, it always does bring a smile to my face in some ways just because like the league itself doesn't have the budget to do some of the content stuff that we would love to see the league do so um you know someone's got to do it i guess is the kind of consequence here and you know with any luck like, next season might be even better than this season based on some of the team and the rumors that we are presently seeing this i thought was kind of cool as well on this day two years ago crim officially announced his retirement from competitive call of duty right it was a pretty dramatic set of circumstances because crim we thought he might get an offer uh, then he was like, oh, my career comes down to like Awakening or something, right? Because Awakening was the one with the keys to potentially get Krim a spot. That never happened. And it was a strange end to Krim's career on some level just because he'd burned so many bridges over the preceding years that even as like the greatest ever, it wasn't like he was guaranteed a spot on our team, even after a pretty good Vanguard season when, okay, the start of the year was a disaster. But after that, the comeback they made, making it to the World Championship, that crazy qualifying, won the Prime, for example, second of their home major all that stuff happened and um obviously it was a legendary season as well crim walking out on stage doing the crim pose and all this good times but um yeah 38 time champion and now of course he's moved on to competitive racing and i'm intrigued to see where he goes like next year because the racing series that he's competing this year is completely dominated so i think next year he will at least be planning or hoping to you know graduate or whatever to another racing series and his goal is to compete in le mans a couple of rostermania things we've got a tattoo out in brazil having a great time it seems and um i mean oh my god i don't even want to talk about this the food <laughs> that looks incredible so here's a touch anyway and um hopefully he's enjoyed himself it's good to see the pros like living life you know what i mean and we said the same thing with Pred that he's out there doing his absolute world tour of europe right now and he, i don't know if he's even back yet like this guy's still cooking but um yeah sim in the replies says duo now what do you guys think about this potential duo if it was to be the case somewhere sim needs a team the rumour is either he will go to Toronto, is maybe the most likely, or to Thieves. But right now, Thieves obviously are talking with Scrappy. So maybe that's going to happen as well. The latest rumours have kind of been that, especially with what we've seen on social media, from Darian to Scrap's girl, they were at a theme park the other day with Envoy and his girl, I think. So and from what I've seen over the last couple of months, Scrap and Envoy seem very close. I wouldn't quite say they're a package deal, but I would say that I would be surprised if Scrap and Envoy aren't teaming next year somewhere. Like, my feeling is if Scrap goes to Cloud9 they will, like, he will try and get them to bring Envoy along with him, whether they have the money for that, I don't know. And maybe the same applies to Thieves. Obviously, that was the big rumor the other day that it's going to be Scrap Envoy. Ghosty would stay, and then if they have the money, they could bring Hydra in. So I think that's something to think about. And um, that obviously would potentially mean that, let's say, Scrap and Envoy, or even just Scrap or whatever, would go into Thieves, then Sib can't go there. Toronto is obviously an option, and Toronto might go for a full rebuild. I mean, Insight is the only player still on that Toronto team that's officially tweeted out, hey, I'm a restricted free agent, like, um, bang my line if you want to win next year type thing, which is usually what's said when you ain't playing there anymore. It's not a guarantee, to be honest, that they won't be playing there anymore. Insight could still stay. 
if he doesn't get a better offer or if Toronto don't want to sell him in the end, they could keep him around, which they may well do. Like, it may be a possibility that Insight and Kleenex as a package deal does stay on Toronto for next year. But if that's the case, they could need an AR still. If Insight were to leave, they might need two ARs. So that's when Sib and potentially Attach come into the conversation. Attach had a pretty good year on Vegas. It was rather up and down. At times, he looked like one of the best ARs in the game. At other times, that did not seem true at all. So, you know, I still think he's got what it takes. He's still got what it takes to pick up a slice of the pie. And it's interesting that Sib, who is undoubtedly going to be one of the absolute number one candidates in this roster mania cycle, is talking with Attach and saying like, hey, you want to drew up somewhere next year? Because if that is the case, then it's plausible that Sib might say to Toronto or whatever other team he might potentially join, like, hey, can we bring Attach along for the ride as well? But Jake Hale is like, look, nothing much has been happening over the last couple of days. At this point, I think I might be going pro, he says in the reply. So nobody really knows what's happening here. Even Money Cheen is potentially throwing his hat in the ring and looking to make a comeback as well. So, um, yeah, we'll see what the next developments are. As I've said before, the likelihood is that either what's happening with Thieves or Cloud9 will get solidified, but then we've also got to figure out what's happening with Fnatic or Gen G or TSM or some other organization that might be looking to get involved in COD and also whether the deadline is applicable because, I mean, let's be honest, the game comes out not far over a month from now on like the 25th of October. The CDL, I'm not sure they really are going to have a specific deadline for when everything needs to be locked in for, but usually, like we've seen last year, for example, Seattle Surge wanted to change their name to Vancouver Surge, but they missed the deadline. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. It's happened a couple of times now, even like for Vegas when they wanted to become Vegas maybe a year before, some weird stuff like that. Or maybe it was like they wanted to change the logo, but um, they just didn't hit the deadline. So Activision does tend to have their deadlines for when things have to be done by. And that's kind of my, what I'm wondering now is that, well, you know, TikTok guys, you know what I mean? Like, if you want to buy out Los Angeles Grillers, if you want to buy out Carolina Royal Ravens, then, you know, the clock is kind of ticking on that because if things go too late, the league will just say, oh, well, you missed the deadline, guys. Unlucky, you lads have to fill the roster for another year, which means another poverty team, which um, I'm not so sure that I want to see, to be honest, as we have discussed before. Let's talk, though, about some interesting clips from the Shotzi side. This was a Flycast episode with uh, Hitch and Maniac, of course, and Shotzi comes along for the ride as well. And this was an interesting observation I thought from Shotzi, they were talking about really players that he's played with that have elevated his game to um, you know a new level, either elevated his playstyle, helped him improve to a great extent. And obviously there's so many names that he could potentially talk about here, right? Because his first year competing, he played with Clay and Krim, two of the greatest ever. Then when he, you know, obviously the merger happens, he then plays with Scump, right? So, you know, there's so many players that he could mention and some of the greatest to ever do it. But um, it was interesting that the three players that he kind of did call mostly to mind. He mentions Clay probably being the most impactful on that original team. Then he talks about Illy, which was an interesting note, I thought. And Dashi has been another player to give Illy so much credit for his play. I mean, Dashi still talks about Illy as being like the smartest search and destroy mind that we have seen in COD, certainly in the recent times. Some would say Adam Killer Sloss, and um, he's definitely up there, one of the best search and destroy players ever. But um, in recent times, Illy has certainly been in that conversation. Dashi's given him so much credit for it. And it seems like Shotzi is convinced that Illy did an awful lot to help Shotzi improve as a player when they teamed for, you know, a good couple of years. Then again, obviously, the Illy situation eventually broke down, and um, Shotzi talked about that a fair bit, but it doesn't necessarily restrict him from appreciating what Illy did for the team. But on the modern team, there's one player that's coming to mind. Do you have, have you ever had a uh, teammate like that in COD? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Fucking, uh, fucking, uh, I'd say Clay was up there, Illy. That, like, makes you play better? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I say Ken right now, for sure. I feel like Ken is very, like, underrated with that. So Shotzi mentioning Kenny here, I don't think should be a massive surprise, right? We know how much Kenny did for that team this season, outside of the game and inside of the game. And it was a big conversation during the year. Let's say Optic didn't win Major 3, which they did, or most certainly didn't win the World Championship. There was a question, well, if this team again has come into a season and not won anything... What do you do? Is it time to make a change? And if you do make a change, can Kenny be the one to go? I mean, I talked to lots of people in Toronto when it wasn't looking like Optic were going to win until they turned up massively on the Sunday. And people were, you know, the general perception was like, well, maybe it's time to trade out Dashi, right? Or, you know, something like that. Just because Kenny had seemingly done a lot for the team and he seemingly wasn't going to go anywhere. And 
you know, I still think whatever happens over the next year or so it would more than likely be a massive mistake to get rid of Kenny. So, um, but then again, obviously, Dashi has improved a lot as a player as well. So, you know, Optic have a very difficult time trying to improve their roster, which is perfectly fine because you've got the best roster in the world, arguably. They just won the World Championship a couple of months ago. But it's always going to be a question, who deserves the most credit for this, right? Which player on the team has turned things around the most? And you can very much argue that that's Kenny, right? Because they made the changes last season. Sure, Karma comes in as a head coach, but, um, you know, Kenny wasn't on that Optic team last year. And even with Kenny this year, there were still a couple of traits of the Optic team that were, and they did have that terrible run, especially in their search and destroys towards the end of the season before they turned it around again for champs. So um, some of the, you know, bad characteristics, I guess, of Optic over the last few years were still there. But in general, Kenny's, um, you know, attitude and his approach absolutely paid dividends for the Optic team. And Shotzi seems to believe that even individually, he helped him improve a lot himself. I mean, Kenny's a player that he likes to command everything on the map. I think that's when Kenny says that he's, um, you know, when he's mostly concerned is when he doesn't have full faith in his teammates to make the correct plays. And therefore, Kenny gets kind of distracted by watching the minimap too much and kind of trying to command the troops a bit more. Kenny will be the leader, obviously, and will kind of say where people should be and what they should do. But especially if he's got trust in those players to play in the way that he wants them to, then the team will be even better. And it seems like Shotzi believes that Kenny had a pretty big part to play in that for him this season, elevating his play style even more. Of course, people were wondering, though, what about Pred? Because Pred was on this team, and from an SMG perspective, he was the other player to join the team this season. And from like an SMG duo size, they became incredibly good, especially towards the end of the year. And it was a big conversation conversation this year as well. Pred and Shotzi, how well would they work together? Would they, you know, with their play styles and mesh? Like, my opinion on this is always if the talent is there, it, you're going to find a way to make it work. You should be able to. And um, I think that's eventually what they managed to do. But in moments like this, I mean, we were seeing kind of levels from Shotzi in terms of energy that we'd not seen before. And it seems to me that, you know, Pred was a big part of that. And, um, you know, Formal's talked about it. Even Shotzi's talked about it before. I guess Shotzi's perspective maybe is that in terms of his overall like play style and elevating his own personal gameplay Kenny was maybe more important but um you know I think you could definitely argue that on the championship Sundays of the season when it came down to you know just bullying the other team off the server Pridge was highly impactful there as well so just thought it was some interesting comments really from Shotzi on that whole situation very much interested your thoughts in the comments below and I guess it also applies a little bit to back in the day as well I know that JP was kind of talking about this the classic optic versus stunner game from several years ago now, where that famous listening ride, Matthias, you sexy about and all this stuff, where they'd actually first started teaming together when he scummed formal. So yeah, start of a bro bounce there, obviously. But um, and they join in the background. Good times, for sure. And one of the most legendary moments in COD history, it's got to be said. JP was watching it on stream the other day. But also that applies, I'm sure, other players as well. If you ask, like, Skump, who was the most impactful player for him getting to his next level... You know, I don't know who would he would say. Maybe he'd even talk about the likes of Aix and TP that he teamed with briefly back in the day on Quantic Leverage, right? I think often players are going to talk about players they played with early on. Zuma might say, um, you know, Crowder or something, right? A player that he played with, Codfather, these type of figures. Help them learn, help them grow, help them improve. But, um, you know, I think that applies to every team that on even on the current rosters, they're going to have someone there that's helping them get better. And um, obviously you're going to see that more with players that have just joined. So Kenny and Pred would potentially more so come to mind an optic but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time let's talk about how seth managed to go with no sleep yeah i can't believe he did that bro when i finished my 24-hour stream i felt like i got hit by a bus and the only thing that i wanted to do was get into bed so the fact that he actually showed up is very typical and i will say this i won't say it to seth's face but he'll probably hear it some way or another I, uh, I'm pissed off, man. Seth actually looks pretty normal with a shaved head. He, he doesn't look that bad with his head buzzed like that. Me, on the other hand, I look like a 45-year-old father of three that is just disgusting. I, I, I don't like the buzz. That's why I'm wearing the hat. But Seth actually looked pretty good. And the fact that he actually made it to the Cowboys game, I got to tip it, bro. I got to tip it.